Okay, so the story is now she is a septuagenarian uh, grand, uh, grandmother and at the beginning of the, the film, uh, she's breaking up with her current lover, Olivia, and uh, suddenly her granddaughter turns up on the doorstep and reveals that she's pregnant and she needs to get an abortion, but she doesn't have any money and what she needs is the money. And you would assume that the, gra the grandmother, who is a poet and a uh, she describes herself as an unemployed academic, would have some money. Unfortunately, she doesn't have any money and also she doesn't have any credit cards because she's cut up all her credit cards and um, turn them into a wind chime because she says she says that credit cards uh, infantilize you and she is she says I'm transmogrifying my life into art so they then spent basically she says okay come with me let's let's go and see if we can raise the money and she then goes on a trip to go and see a series of her friends and the, one of the sort of you know uh, the themes of it is that she comes from a sort of counter-cultural background and her young granddaughter hasn't benefited from the counter but the first thing they do is to go to the house of the boy who is responsible for the situation you're gonna have to get the money cam well, who is this it's my grandma half Give us half the money. Yo, Grandma, what you, what you doing here? You know you're going to have to take responsibility for this, too. How do I know it was me? What? You heard me? I didn't sleep with anyone else. What's up with Mike? Yeah, like a year ago, and we used a condom. Yeah, why didn't you use a condom? Or for humanity's sake, get a vasectomy. What? What did she just say? She didn't say anything, OK? Look, she said it wasn't her time. Oh, yeah. Her time? What are you, a moron? What are you, both morons? Don't they teach kids sex ed anymore? Listen, Grammy, you better watch yourself. Look at this sorry-ass loser. Some people should not grow beards. Your face looks like an armpit. Now, the, it's, it's, it's one of my favourite scenes in the movie. Loads of people would just think, yep, that's yeah. uh, that's top top work. Now, uh, the film was directed by and written by Paul Weitz, who said that he pretty much wrote the role for Tomlin. He'd had the idea for it for a long time, and then he worked with Tomlin on admission. And then he wrote it. He said that the way he described it is he went to a cafe and he sat down and he wrote it, or, you know, pretty much longhand. And what then happens is that they go visiting all uh, Elle's old friends um, in, you know, in an attempt to raise money, but also, more importantly, in an attempt to sort of to, to, to show the granddaughter what it is that she's been missing out on in terms of a cult, countercultural education. So all the way through the journey, they're going to, for example, a coffee, uh, like the cafes, like the Cafe Bonobo, which is named after this, you know, which is described as these incredibly superior apes in which the females run, all, run the show and they don't have wars, you know, unlike chimps and humans. And at one point, the granddaughter actually says to, uh, to Lily Tomlin's character, to, you know, do you hate men? She says, no, I like men enough. You know, my dad was a man. But the point is, she is from an age in which feminism had won all, in which she's talking about you know, Gloria Steinem, in which she's talking about Simone de Beauvoir, in which she's talking about Betty Friedan. And basically, she is astonished that her granddaughter doesn't know about any of these people, doesn't know about these great works, doesn't know about you know female eunuch or any of that stuff, and therefore is essentially living you know, an unenlightened life. Now, what's really impressive about the film is this that on the one hand, it is clearly a film which is very, very, you know, very, very clearly an open-minded. It is a film which is pro-choice. It is a film in which there are uh, lesbian characters and transgender characters and straight characters. It's a film in which, you know, people... Have, and and they, are, they are absolutely the core of the movie and they are totally, you know, sympathetically and understandingly portrayed. So it is, it is not a film that is, is politics are anything other than profoundly progressive. But it never feels like it's being polemical. In fact, what works about it is that it is a sort of, it has this poignant, bittersweet comedy going all the way through it, which is the sense that Lily Tomlin's character is exasperated at how much the younger generation haven't benefited from the counterculture that she's benefited. There's one point when she's having a conversation with Sam Elliott, and Sam Elliott says, for seeing you makes me feel so old. She says, I like being old. The young are stupid. If, in other hands, this would have been called Bad Grandma, and it would have been a film whose entire central joke was, hey, the grandma has more tattoos and gets into more fights and, you know, takes more drugs than anybody who's younger. It would have been a kind of... You know the absolutely fabulous gag, which is that the the the, the parents are disreputable, and actually it's the the kid who's smart and intelligent. The savvy kid. Well, this is almost like an, an episode of Absolutely Fabulous, in which it's reversed, in which the older generation genuinely do know more about it. And what's happening during the course of it is, firstly, it's you know it's a very sort of tender, you know, bonding story about a grandmother and her granddaughter, both of whom are estranged from and absolutely terrified of the mother. I have to say, brilliantly played by Marcia Gay Harden, who is really really terrific. I mean, it's a small but very, very significant role. 
but it never feels preachy. It never feels like, um, you know, it never feels like it's a film which is setting down a political agenda. As we travel from place to place in this uh, beaten up 55 Dodge, which was the car of the life partner, uh, Violet, whom our central character has now lost, you sort of feel like you're going on a journey through time from the 1960s and 1970s to the present day. The script is literate and funny and sharp and edgy and often very kind of, uh, uh, you know, it, it has a real bite to it. It's funny that Lily Tomlin said that when she was first talking to Paul Weitz about the role, she was worried about how grouchy the character was. And in that interview that she did with you, she, she said, you've seen that video, haven't you? Which is, the, have you seen the video of her yes, when losing she... her rag on the set of um, uh, uh, the David O. Russell movie, the name of which now is I Heart Huckabees, isn't it? And she, uh, she yes, you could say we couldn't broadcast any of it. Because she she loses she loses it absolutely completely. But you know it's a very it's a very watchable piece. But what I like about the film is I think it's it's you know it's engaging and funny and literate and you know obviously I, I you know it's it progressive in its attitude to its characters and and it rings true in terms of those relationships. And the the thing that's smart about it is that the joke is not oh look the old hippie countercultural granny is the funny thing. You're never laughing at her. You're always laughing with her. And that's the thing that makes it something special. I think Lily, Lily Tomlin is really terrific in it.